by God's wonderful grace and uh, mercy and through the Holy Spirit's direction, we want to continue learning the Holy Scriptures and God's Word has provided us with some guidelines, some principles. And when we read the epistle of the Apostle Paul to the church at Rome, we find that it begins with a very special introduction of what God has done for Christians. And uh, first with the church at uh, Rome, and then he begins to provide other details of how God loves us so much that he gave his begotten son. And in addition to that, he made the provision that we should enjoy that wonderful justification by faith. But at the same time, right at the first chapter of Rome, uh, the letter to the people, uh, he said certain things. And of course, first we can see, we remember that he says he thanks God for what God has done. But then as we get to the middle of that chapter 1, beginning from verse 18, let us hear it again and then we can go into detail. We know we read uh, it throughout, but then the details of what every word he was saying in the beginning of what we are going to be reading now will help us to fully understand the essence of God's desire for Christians to live holy lives and not to say that, oh, I'm a Christian, but then I can continue living that sinful life. That does not cut it. That is not what God requires of us. So here is God's word again from Romans chapter 1, verses 18 and then following, which he says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all unrighteousness, or should I say, all ungodliness first, and then unrighteousness of men and women who hold the truth in unrighteousness. 19. Because that which may be known of God is manifest, is understood, is known in them, in all of us. For God hath shown it unto them. 20. For the invisible things of him, that means God, from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are, they are without excuse. Right? That is what God is saying. Verse 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Amen. This is the introduction of what we want to study today by God's grace. What is the Apostle Paul saying? He is reminding our Christians that yes, God has given us that sanctification and justification, but he also calls us to holiness. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But by giving us his son, his beloved son, our Lord Jesus Christ, he wants us to live holy lives, not as in the sinful way of others who don't really uh, know. But of course, that is the excuse we give, right? We don't know. But what did God say from the beginning? 
he has already made it known. So no one can say, even from our infancy, we know this is wrong, this is right, but then don't we do it? Here, he says, verse 19, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it unto them. God has shown it all and shown us all. We know it. But what do we do? Oh, sorry. Oh, I didn't know. I don't remember. <laughs> God says we know. So, as we continue to deliberate, we want to also understand what other references of God's word point to what he says to us in this first Romans chapter 1. We go to Psalm 22 and Psalm uh, well, verses 22 and 23 tells us that I will declare, that means God speaking, I will declare thy name. Here we find the message, praising God, honoring God, and all of this telling us, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the most, or, well, everywhere, in the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. 25 says verse of uh, Psalm 22 and this time verse 25 My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation I will pay my vows before them that fear him where? God Almighty. So I mean God is providing details of what we have read in Romans chapter 1 and more to follow. What he says is that when the Apostle Paul wrote, we know he wrote many of the um, epistles in the New Testament, right? So they are all meant to energize us to serve God in spirit and in truth. And then 1 Corinthians verse 11 of chapter 1 says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Amen. So when we know God's word, when we already hear and continue to say, oh, I will do what God says, we know it is all true, that power from God. But then, when it is to those who are disobedient, who don't want to follow, then it becomes, oh no, you are just uh, saying this, and, but God's word is always true and he wants us to apply them to our life. He says, 1 Corinthians 1, 24, But unto them which are called, both Jews and Gentiles, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. When we say we have been called, the Jews, the Israelites, of course, but then the Greeks, those who were not from the origin of the Jews, of course, as we know, when we think about Father Adam, from the beginning, he created all, and God, through him, created uh, first Adam, Eve, and then the rest of uh, the children started having children and started growing. And so this is God's will for us that whether we are Jews, whether we are Greeks, whether we are whatever we are Gentiles, whatever, we are called into God's kingdom. And that is why we need to live holy lives. And so it is for us to apply them to our life. When we also hear some of the words that were provided some of the uh, lessons, some of the guidance, some of everything that has been written, whether it was said by uh, Mary, whether it was said by John uh, the Baptist or any others, they are all meant to help us all apply the principles of God. And here, Luke 2, 30 says, For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Haven't you seen God's salvation? We've seen God's salvation, but what are we doing with it? Are we applying them or are we uh, still in sin or still deciding on, well, uh, I'm not sure. 
let us continue to apply what God has written to us so that when we know what God's will, it will attract others to also serve God, to also believe in God and apply them. So, but again, as we said from the beginning, the title of what we are learning has to do with the ungodliness and unrighteousness against God. So whenever there is something that is unrighteous, it is against God. And we, who by God's grace have known what God says, we need to be applying them to our life and not to be giving the excuse that, oh, I am already saved, so I don't need to worry. We need to worry about what we do, what we say, because others are watching us and we need to be spiritual examples to everyone else. Acts chapter 3, verse 25. Hear God's word. Unto you, first, God, having raised up his son, Jesus sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. The Apostle Paul preaching to those who came and said, well, uh, pardon me, Apostle Peter, because uh, Peter was the first uh, evangelist, the one who uh, began the ministry, and then they came and said, what is happening to these people? He said, well, here, here, uh, God's word. And so the Apostle Peter was sharing what God has done, and by reminding them of what God has done, enabled them to continue to say, oh, okay, all right. So then here we now reference the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 2, verse 9, where he says, Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man and woman that doeth evil of the Jews first and also of the Gentiles. So what he is saying here is that while God has granted us salvation, eternal life, he is also going to judge the world. First, the Jews, and then the, uh, should we say, Gentiles, or those who did not uh, know God from the beginning, but have been called the Gentiles, all of those. And we are all, uh, we are not Christians, but God brought us in through what he has done at Calvary. So that's why Christians are always uh, part of the redemption that God has for Israel and all. So anytime we say Israel, we are also adding our names as Christians to what God has provided. And now, again, Romans chapter 3, verse 21 provides more details. It says, But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, is shown, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Amen. So again, what we are doing is referencing all of those scripture verses that we have already touched on, which is in Romans chapter 1. And they are pointing different places, helping us to know that God requires us to leave our sinful ways, to stop sinning, to stop those things that we are doing. Of course, somebody will say, I didn't know that from the beginning. What did he say in chapter 1? God has made his will known. People say, well, I didn't know. They knew. They know and they continue to do their sinful ways. So may God help us all so that if we say we are Christians, let us live life that shows that we are truly Christians. Romans 9, 30 says, What shall we say then? That the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. You can see again, I mean, when God gave the Gentiles, non-Christians, the holiness, the righteousness, that's what we are being told. He gave the righteousness because even though we were not part of it. God, through the work of Calvary, granted us that redemption. And that is what the Apostle Paul continues to say. Again, in this Romans chapter 9, we just read verse 30. Again, it is all pointing to righteousness, holiness. So God doesn't want us to live in disobedience. 
you already know what God said. Why do you keep living in unrighteousness? Let's go to Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 24. Uh, Habakkuk 2 and verse 4 says, Behold his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by God's faith. Faith in God, faith in Christ. That is how we will enjoy the blessings. So if we are applying and following them, then all is well. Philippians 3, 9 says, And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. So we see that faith is always, always part of what God wants us to have. We have faith in other people, in our family, in our loved ones, in our managers, in our bosses, in our neighbors. Why not in God? So God has done all the work for us and he wants us to apply them to our life so that we can enjoy more of the blessings and also be spiritual examples to others who are not Christians or who may say they have forgotten. They all knew from what we read, right? But then, don't we forget? We forget sometimes. So God is patient and is willing to allow us to enjoy that new life in Christ. So Galatians 3.11 says, But that not man, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. If you have been justified, then you need to be living in faith, by faith, according to what God has granted us or showed us. And that is the way to go and follow God in all ways. Hebrews 10 38 says, Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man or woman draw back, what will happen? My soul, God's soul, shall have no pleasure in him or her. Amen? So God wants us to live by faith. If we say we are living by faith, then we are not going to be part of those who are living on godliness and unrighteous lives, right? That's what God says. Back to Acts 17 and verse 30. And what does he have here? He says, And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commanded all men and women everywhere to do what? To repent. We know what God says, but sometimes we think we don't know. God is saying, repent. Repentance is needed today, as it was in the past. So may the Lord help us to really have that desire to always want to know God's will, to apply God's will. He says, you know, in the past, we say, oh, well, I didn't know. What have you done with what you know? That is a great question. So God is calling us all to repent. Sometimes we think repentance is for uh, some people. Uh, it's for only, it's for everyone. It's for everyone. It's for pastors. It's for uh, members. It's for neighbors. It's for the community. It's for everyone. So may the Lord again guide our hearts, our minds to really apply the principles of God's word because he says he has made a provision for us. Romans 6, 1 and 13 says, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness 
how? Unto God. So, I mean, we see that God is calling us to righteousness. God is calling us to holiness. Because if we follow on godliness, on righteousness, you know, how can a Christian say that, oh, I'm a Christian so I can continue to live in sin? It's not possible. It means the person was not a Christian in the first place. Sometimes we think, oh, I'm a Christian and all that. But then, why continue in sin? Why were the apostles preaching against ungodliness, unrighteousness? It is because it continued. He was preaching to those who were already Christians. That's where all the epistles were sent. They became Christians, and yet they were still living in ungodliness. And so he wrote to them and said, no, you cannot live that life. You have to take yourself out. If you say you're a Christian, a true Christian, then everything you do should be consistent with God's word and God's will. So may God help us. Second Thessalonians 2 verse 10 says, And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Amen. Those who receive God's word, who hear God's word, but through what they continue in that unrighteous living, unrighteous life. And what happens to them? They die, as it was said. They perish. When you continue in that ungodliness, unrighteousness, you, know, you end up dying. You will die in this world, but then there's a second uh, death, eternal death, which continues forever. May God help us so that we don't get you know, distracted and say, that, oh, I'm a Christian, you know, I can continue to sin. No. That's a, a reward. For all those who continue in sin. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 13 tells us that and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes. Sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. So, God wants us to really be careful. Let's read that again. Second Peter 2 13. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to riot. In the daytime, spots they are and blemishes, spotting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. They go out with you, they come and, and yeah, but then they are, there is wickedness, there is all these things in them, but they are filled with those pleasures of this world. May God help us. We do not want to be part of them. Again, while we have all of these lessons, it's just, it's because in the scripture, it's there. Somebody may say, well, uh, we are preaching about uh, unrighteousness, ungodliness, and all. It's because God has it in his holy scriptures. All right, here's more. First John, we've heard about the Apostle Peter, the Apostle Paul. Now, we go to the Apostle John. First John 5 and 17 says, All unrighteousness is what? Is sin. And there is a sin not unto death. So we need to be careful about our spiritual lives. If we say we are living a righteous life, we have to remove every sin. Whether it's a small sin or half sin, it is sin. Sin is sin. It could be uh, 1%, 10%. It is sin. And may 
God help us to avoid such and it will be helpful. Back to Acts chapter 14 verse 17 says, nevertheless, the less, uh, the, nevertheless who God, he left not himself without witnesses in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and food, fruitful seasons filled our hearts with food and gladness. So God has provided all of these things to us. When we have all this food, this crop, this uh, vegetables and everything else that we eat, and it is because of God and of course man in his, uh, well, whatever. Is it out of um, greed? Has decided to corrupt the seeds and the food and everything else. But God will continue to provide us with the protection so that our foods will continue to be well, even though they have tried everything to provide imitation food, fake food, and things that are not consistent not to be eaten because they think of they want to feed the whole world. If you want to feed the whole world, provide good food. Why do we have to have organic? When organic should be natural, organic should be av available to all. So may the Lord help us. And now Acts 17 and 24 says, God that made the world and all things therein seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. So when people get to the point where their lives are, their things, and, and they say, oh, uh, this place and that place and all of these things, and God who made all of the things we have in this world, and, he is in heaven and he is spiritual and he wants us to apply his commandments, his, uh, uh, the principle that he has given to us um, so that we don't just continue living in sin. There is so much that God has already made available to every one of us. There is sin. And that sin is what the Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Rome when first he began by letting, letting them know that God has forgiven them. God has granted them all this justification by faith. But at the same time, you know, that doesn't mean if you know God's will, if you know this thing burns and you keep your hand in it, you know, what will happen? You are causing harm to yourself. So may God help us to really realize that this list of things, should I say, unrighteousness, ungodly living, it's something that is in this world, it's in this church, it's in every church. So, not to say that it is something that everybody is doing. Some people do it. Not every Christian is into sin. But even if it's one person who is in the church, who is doing it, you know, it is a sin. And so whoever is doing it, you know, God says, let us repent. Let us change. Because repentance means that we have understood God's word. And we do not want to continue in it. That's why he said, you know, he's called us all to repent. May God help us to have that desire that as we worship him on a daily basis, we want to ensure that we are living in consistency to his will, his commandments. We thank God for what he has provided us and we pray that we may continue to glorify him and praise him as we go forth in doing his will in our areas. Amen.